my name is Robin Gordon Cartier. Welcome to Harp Gathering 2020. I'm so excited that Denise and Michael decided to put workshops online as a kind of appetizer to Harp Gathering's 2021. My workshop is called Lead the Way, and we're going to talk about lead sheets and how much easier they can sometimes make learning a lot of music or learning music quickly or even learning music that you're going to play one time and never play again. The reason I love Lead Sheets is because Lead Sheets takes a pile of music that's this big and condenses it to about this big. And that's good in anybody's books to not have to carry all that stuff. So one of the things I like to do to start this, and for me, my outline style, of course, I think I failed it at school, is just looking at the words. So we're going to deal with the words Lead Sheet with the first category being learn your chord symbols. So to play with lead sheets, you've got to learn your chord symbols. And what I'd like to do is start with a warm up. And the warm up I want us to do is using your third finger and starting at middle C. And we're just going to play from middle C to the high C. We're going to play up the scale and we're going to say the names of the notes with our third finger. Here we go at about this pace, C, D. Here we go. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And those notes are the names of the chords. Let's try it with your left hand, saying the notes. C, D, E. both hands let's play those notes third fingers and this time we're going to say the degree of the scale lead sheets are often written with either the chord symbols i.e the letter c d e f or with the numbers of the chords a one chord a two chord a three chord so now we're going to say the numbers the numbers of the chord are the numbers of the scale degree and we start with one here we go both hands and one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those are your scale degrees. Now, the reason we use the third finger is because now I want to look at the chord itself. So when we put our third finger on middle C, to place out a chord, we're going to skip a note, which is the D, and place second finger on E, skip a note, which is the F, and put your thumb on G. This is a C chord. It's a triad, C, E, G. Triad, three notes, C, E, G. And so what I'd like to do now is we're going to go up the scale playing the chords, still saying the names of the chords. Now, when you're first starting to get used to putting your hand in down for a chord, down for a triad. I'm spelling it to you and I'm saying C, skip a note, D, skip a note, F, and you have C, E, G. But when you place it, and the reason we're going to do the exercise is because I want you to place really getting your hands on all at one time. So that even though we say C, skip a note, E, skip a note, G, when you put your fingers down, you're going to try to put your fingers down all at one time on those three notes. So to practice placing that, we're going to play the chord. We're going to place to play the other chord. So it's going to look like this. C, place, the D, place, the E. And we're going to go all the way up. And this time, we're also going to come back down. Here we go. Ready? It's C, place, the D, place, the E, place, the F, place, the G. Place the A, place the B, place the C, go down to B, to the A, to the G, to the F, to the E, to the D. Now you're at C, and that is the C chord. Now with your left hand, let's try the same thing. 
Ready? Here we go. C to the D. Place the E to the F. Place the G to the A to the B to the C. Back down for B to the A to the G. Now, I do understand that for some of you, you're like, wait a minute, why am I even bothering with this? This is too easy. It's too elementary for me. I know my triads, but anyone who knows me knows I like to start at the beginning. I like to start at the beginning for warm-ups and also so that there's no one left behind. But for all of you intermediate advanced people, while we're practicing that chord, you could be um, um, practicing your chords in this way. We're with the same speed we're going. So you could be playing C to the D to the E to the F and so on. Or you could maybe be doing arpeggios C to the D to the E to the F. And as you're doing all those things, try to be doing it without buzzing. You can make up your own thing. You could be doing four finger patterns C to the D. And practice getting those those chords. I just did the conditioning exercises with the C chords. But practice doing the chords so you can always take something that seems basic and make it a little harder for yourself and a little more complicated. And one thing I love about all these online courses is you also can rewind and play it again and practice it again. So now we're going to do it with two hands and this time we're going to call out the scale degrees. Here we go. Ready? It's one, two, the two, two, the three, two, the four, two, the five, two, the six, two, the seventh, two, the one, back down, the seventh, two, the six, two, the fifth, two, the fourth, two, the third, two, the second. Also, be when you're doing that to pump it up a little more notch. You can say one C chord, two D chord, three E chord, four F chord, and so on. And also, just getting faster with it. You also want to get to where you can play the chords without looking at your hands and trying not to buzz okay and there's one so looking and saying c or d e to the f to the g to the a to the b to the c then try it together i don't know if i'll do it but what happens is you start to feel the shapes yay i did it you start to feel the shapes of the chord a book that's really good for getting all familiar with this type of thing the geography and getting around the harp is denise our host, our leader, is her book, Finger Puzzles and Shapes. So if you don't have that book, make sure you get it. And once again, it's for all levels. And it teaches and talks about how the shapes of things also really reflect where you're going to put your finger and how to get used to putting your fingers there. I am tapping with my hand, with my foot. You also can put your metronome on. And you have your metronome on, say, at this speed. And you're giving yourself a break, then move up to where you're going. Then move to where you're going. Etc. etc. And each time just noticing and saying, ooh, I gotta practice that a little slower because I'm buzzing. Lead sheets are all about the chord symbols. Now the three most important chords are the one, which in the key of C is the C chord, the four, which is the F chord in the key of C and the five, which is the G. Now, one and five are the first two. Like you could start out with all one and then throw in a five, and the four is like that little extra, but I think we can do three chords and call them our most important chords. The reason that knowing your numbers is also good is some of the lead sheets, especially if you're looking at some old music, when we refer to the chords, they'll have numbers and not letters. So let's look at what that means. We are in the key of C major. 
that's no sharp. My harp is tuned in E flat major, so I have my E's, B's, and A's up. B's, E's, and A's. I want to go to the key of G, so I have to put up my F. And in the key of G, my one chord now is G, my four chord is C, my five chord is D. And if I were looking at music that had numbers, I wouldn't have to remember letter names so much to change keys and to transpose it. I immediately can go to the letter, I can go to the number. So it's one of the ways to really make sure that you're able to play in any type of chord, any type of symbols that they have. So to start out with a lead sheet, I'd like to go to Amazing Grace. Now, Amazing Grace is a traditional song. It's one of the most played songs ever. Yes, it is a, a church song, a spiritual song, a religious song, but it's a song that you can play regardless to your beliefs as a way of learning. And you can also, if you have a problem playing any songs that are spiritual or religious, Go to the old folk songs and they will give you the same type of ease to start with simple songs and move up. But I'd like everybody to just do this amazing grace with me. So when I get lead sheet, the first thing I do with the lead sheet is to learn the melody. And as you're learning the melody, one of the things that can be really helpful is to start looking at the notes and looking at, well, if there's two notes, Amazing Grace in the key of C starts with G, C, and the C is at half note. So I automatically would place fingers two, one, and I'd come off. And then it's E, C, E, and I'd come off. Now, you might look at it and say, well, wait a minute, I can do three fingers, three, That's fine too. Everyone is going to place according to their fingers. You might be like, well, Robin, I can do my second finger only. I tell you to get really used to fingering. So they'll help you. It's so much harder to play without looking when you have using two, 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 and two. But so what I like to do is play through the melody. So let's do that now. You would have this lead sheet. You can grab any lead sheets that are public domain by just typing the name in. And this is Amazing Grace in the key of C. Here we go. that a bit shapeless with it, not any dynamics, but what we're doing is we're trying to get the melody in your ear so that now as you add the chord symbols, you really start to get a feel of what the purpose and the point is. We are in 3-4, and what I'd like you to start out doing if you've never done chord symbols before is the chord that is played the most in this song is the C chord. And even though it's gonna sound a little hinky in some spots, I want you to just right now play with me the C chord on the first beat. Here we go. Three C chord. C chord. Keep playing that C chord. Three, one, two. I was gonna send it out on a funny here, but that's okay. Just get used to playing the C chord on the B. One, two, three, 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 one, two. So that we're playing it sort of like a drone. What happens really in a drone is instead of having the harmonious C E G, they take out the E just have to C and G and oftentimes drones are played very much lower almost to give that kind of bagpipe sound and that then I wouldn't have to apologize for the notes that don't fit because listen so you can hear us coming over the mountain you see 
So that's just a drone. It's a way of, I really want you to get comfortable with playing your right hand and your left hand with the chords. So now let's add, let's add the F chord. So I'm gonna call out the chord, still playing very slowly, this melody and your C chord. So we're gonna add the C and you know what? We're gonna add the G too. So if we just, you can practice also just doing the chords yourself and thinking it's a C. It's a C to the F to the C. And you can practice the chords alone. Practice it alone in the in the hand that you're doing. But you have plenty of time and I'm going to call it out for you. Here we go. C chord. Here we go. C chord. Another C to the F chord. Back to C. C again. Another C. Go up to the G. Give me another G. Back to the C. C. To an F. To the C. C again. G. In with C. I laugh sometimes because as I'm saying it, I'm forgetting to say it or I'm like, I'm not going to say it. So I want you to start hearing it. And so how are you going to practice it? And how are you going to practice hearing it and um, doing without the melody? You can practice it humming. I'm not a singer, but I'm going to show you if I wanted to practice it and just get real comfortable with my chords, I might practice it like that. Boom, boom. Using both my hands because if somebody else was doing the melody C to the G. and with the numbers, then you're able to switch. Now, in your lead sheet, you're going to see something that says seven. And there's a seven in this lead sheet. It's the G7. And what that means, we did our triads, three, two, one, which was the root, which is one, the third, which was the E, and the fifth, which is the G. So it's one, three, five makes the triad. Whenever you see the numbers, it's all about counting. You just have to remember to count the bottom number two. So we're talking about a G7, and the G now is, you're gonna count that as one, and if you count up G, A, B, C, D, E, F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it ends, it takes you to the F. So now if you play your triad G, skip a note to the B, skip a note to the D, now skip a note to the F. So it's really like just playing your triad chords. Instead of using your third finger, skip a note, skip a note, now you're using your fourth finger, skip a note, skip a note, and you get a G7. And what the G7 does is adds a little more flavor to the notes so that now your chord is like this. So watch what happens. We're doing a C chord, another C, an F to a C chord. C again to another C. Now G7. G7 again. And so on, right? And so the other thing that you can do when you get to the sevens or you get to the chords that give you space, we could have um, went... So you could do it in an arpeggio. You could do it in a quick arpeggio. So you can fill in those spaces and then you would been right back at your, at your note. So now, so these are the chords. Three chord, a four chord, and oh my gosh, boring, right? It's boring. And so now, because we've just done the basic work. So now what you wanna do is say, okay, I get it. Chord symbols, we've done our chords, I can play them. And now there's a lot of theory to chords because there's minor chords, there's major chords. We are not getting into any of that. The thing I will tell you right now, if that's your interest, please just look up music theory, 
chord symbols online. There are charts that you can get. But for those of us who maybe don't have that kind of time or don't want to put that kind of time in, what will happen is you're going to let your ear tell you. You're going to let your ear tell you if something is right or wrong. And if you're following chord symbols and you play something that doesn't fit, look more carefully at the chord symbol. Oftentimes they use capital letters for major chords. This is a major chord in the key of C. C is a major chord in the key of C. D is not. And you hear the difference? C, E, G, nice and happy, but D, F, A, a different sound. The E chord is still that minor chord, but F chord is major and G chord. So what will happen is if you're playing chord symbols and you didn't notice that it was capital, usually for minor, they do a lowercase, but it's all changing now. Use your ear. If you play a chord and it's like, oh, that doesn't sound right. Check the key you're in. It could be you need to move a lever. There could be other reasons that the chord just doesn't fit. But how do we get it out of the land of boring? Angie Bemis has books called Lead Sheet Basics, Volume 1, 2, and 3. I love these Lead Sheet Basics books because not only does she go over lead sheets, she also gives you choices. Other Lead Sheet books that are really good are Ray Poole's Hymn in Harmony book and his The Harpist Fake book and Louise Trotter's Easy Fake book for Lever Harp and Getting Started in Pop Harp, dealing with a lot of chord symbols. In Angie's book, she will write out the notes in lead sheet format, and then on the next page, she will show you what she did with those chords, kind of what we did when we were just playing chords, and then we added this. But the thing that I really like is she also starts to show you how do we get it not to sound so boring. Playing root position chords for the whole time of the song, just it has this one closed sound. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take the C chord and we're gonna open it up. Instead of playing the root, the third, and the fifth, we're gonna put our fourth finger on the C, skip the third, and go to the G, which is the fifth, and then go to the octave C and play this. So, still a C chord, but it's a little more open than, it's like you opened your mouth a little wider. If your hand's big enough, I'm going to take my thumb and instead of repeating the C, I'm going to go up to the A. So you see how we've taken a C chord. It's there. Now I'm just playing C, G, C. Now I'm spreading to C, G, E. And you could go to the G if you wanted to, but you could, you're spreading out the chords. Because it's a C chord is a C chord no matter which shape you take it in. And what that gives you is an opportunity to play C, G, C, F. F, C, F. So you're playing the octave and the fifth. G. And listen to what makes it sound different now. Watch. A whole different sound then. Right? Now... I tend to say you don't want all of it to be the same, especially when you have a repeated chord, right? So you could start out with the root position, then move in a little further along, maybe go root position here, and then even a wider. Did you hear the difference? You can play around until you get something you'd like. One of the other bass patterns she talks about is the one five eight two three she's going root position c five is the g she's taking her second finger and going over to the d right above my thumb c and then putting the thumb on the e and playing d e so now watch it's c g c d e so now go to the f f back to the C. And then your G is the same. It's just a pattern that you can do throughout this whole this whole song, throughout the thing. And now listen to what you have here. And once again, you 
wouldn't necessarily just play that over and over and over. Make variations. You might want to go back and forth. So you can play around with it. You can intermix your chords and your patterns. Play with variations. Make exercises so you could practice playing. I'm gonna play the C chord in my right hand and play a pattern. C. Then I'll play the F chord. Right? G chord. So lead, learn your chord symbols. We just did a whole lot about the chord symbols. So let's go on with E, evaluate the pieces you choose. And that's why I say start with a simple piece. Start with simple pieces. A is for analyze the chords, the style, and the intent of the piece. So what is the intent? And what do we mean when we say styles? D is for do the work. Part of the work is knowing what the different styles can be. So that, so here's Amazing Great. What if we wanted to make Amazing Grace a waltz? There's my same C chord, now the F chord. Of course, all these examples I'm showing you, I don't know if anyone's going to want to do this, but just so you can hear what we mean when we say analyze the style, know the style of the piece. What about marching band? Now, when you're doing marching band and using chord symbols, you can take the chord symbol, which is a C, and go down from the C, four notes, C, B, A, G. Go down from the F, F, E, D, C, and so on and so forth. So watch what that sounds like. marching band you could do it with the chords and all that what about if you wanted it to kind of have like a um, Latin flavor and you wanted to give it the same chords and then back to the C right and we've added and we learned our seven with our G7 you could start really taking those seventh chords and adding them. So just like you practice with your triads, with your th third finger, skip a note, skip a note, let's put our fourth fingers on C, both hands, skip a note, skip a note, skip a note. So we're now looking at seventh chords and just play those up to look at the seventh chords. Here we go. C to the D to the E to the F to the G, to the A, to the B, to the C. Some sound nicer than others. Some are truly chords. That's a major seven. Your G7, G7 is called the dominant seventh. So they have different sounds. As I said, you might not want to know all those names. So just learn to use your ear. But so what if you wanted to kind of jazz up your Amazing Grace a little bit? And so for your bass, you might do something like this. We're going to use the C in the bass, but then we'll go to a seventh chord starting on the E. You see, so we might do. all sorts of ways to just keep on doing different things. So that's why you want to um, be looking at the style of the pieces. You got to schedule practice time to include doing and messing around with pieces like this, doing some arranging of music. Do not short your practice time. This is another layer, another thing to do. Um, you can um, tag on some times. There are many lead sheet books that are already out there for Harp is written by Harp is. If you want to look at other people, if you play with groups, there's the um, the real book. And with the jazz things, you just got to be careful. A lot of times you're going to start running into a whole lot of different chords that are going to have you using levers and pedals and all sorts of things like that. Hymnals that have chord symbols are very good to practice this type of thing. With your style, so that's now we're on sheet H. Hear all types of styles for the same piece of music, which is so easy with YouTube and all of that now. E, enlist other musicians and have some fun with lead sheets. 
E, entertain, create arrangements people would like to hear. What we're doing right now, you know, is not something that necessarily someone's going to want to hear. I'd have to tweak it. I have to work with it more. T, take the time to get real comfortable. That's why you're doing the exercises, trying to be real comfortable with where your chords are. Study, and once you get used to the basic chords, then you move on. Remember, we started Amazing Grace with just the one chord in the beginning, just the one chord. So you want to study and keep going on. One of the really great things playing with other instruments is that then you get to take your chords and you get to... Um, do more with the chords than you might normally do if you're playing the melody and the accompaniment. So one of the things about chords, here's a C chord. To make it, we did it wider, we went right to the, making it stretch there with the 158 and the 1510 and all of that. But it, another way to make them wider, you have C, E, G. We're going to invert this chord. My name is Robin Gordon Cartier, and I'll be Robin Gordon Cartier whether I lay down, whether I stand on my head, no matter what, I'll still be me. So this C chord, as long as you play the notes C, E, or G, is going to be a C chord, but we can change the shape of it. So instead of starting on C, you have your fingers on the C, E, G, three, two, one, put your third finger under your second finger, and now your third finger is on E. Now take your second finger, put it under your thumb, it's on G. So we have E, G, the only note we can move our thumb to now is C, because we can only use the notes C, E, and G. This is the first inversion of the C chord. So we went from C, E, G to E, G, C. Now having your fingers on E, G, C, take your third finger and put it under the second finger. Now the third finger's on G. Take your second finger, put it under the thumb. Now that's on C. And your thumb can only go, we have C and G. What's missing? The E. That's your second inversion. So we have root position, C, E, G. First inversion, E, G, C. Second inversion, G, C, E. And you practice that in both hands. And then you're back at your root. It's a very hard thing. You, you know we have many songs where you're just hearing chords. And this is what they're going up on when they're doing it. So now with the inversions, you've now taken your song. And so if you have places where the chords are repeating, it's going to be very helpful. I want to look at Brahms Lullaby for a minute. So Brahms Lullaby is in the key of C. And one of the things that happens in this piece, Brahms Lullaby, is the first three measures are all C. When you're looking at your lead sheets, if you have a letter for the chord symbol, and it goes through three measures with no other letter, that means all of those measures are the C chord. But so if we're playing, and remember, when you take out a new piece, I'd love you to do the, to play it. Just play the melody, practice side meeting so you can start thinking about where your fingers are going and can you play and, you know, look, oh, there's three things. I'm going to use three fingers. Oh, it goes back to up three again. And so that you can place your fingers, right? So do that work first with your right hand then left hand, then together. But it's got the C chord for the first three measures like this. With the C chord now, that sounds a bit like a drone, and I don't want a drone there. So what could I do? There's a couple of things. If I stay with the melody right where it was, I'm going to use my inversions, and so I'm going to play root position. I'm going to go the first inversion. Now if I go the second inversion, do you hear the difference? So listen, instead of... my inversions and I play first inversion second inversion and of course I, I don't know what I did with the right hand but you get the picture right so that you can start moving around and not just playing C chord there you can play it here you can play it here same with your with your seventh chords 
You have now root position, first inversion, second inversion, and you even get a third inversion in the root position. Why? Because you have four fingers. So we have C chords, we have G chords, and we have F chords in Brahms Lullaby. I want you to just look and, and you have the sheet so that you can play the melody. And now with this, I'm going to play around with it. I'm just going to play it for you. I'll shout out the chords, but let's do something different with the chords. So we're here. to note and you're moving it around in ways that you like and the thing that's so beautiful about a lead sheet is and you might change it each time but with this lead sheet you also and this is something if someone were singing or if you were playing with someone else to do like we did with amazing great kind of hear the melody and now you can you have two hands so you can start with chords mm -hmm. C chord now moving up G7 chord, dun dun, I can keep it going there. Bum, 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 bum. So someone's singing, and you are free when someone sings to be able to just play the accompaniment. The other thing it gives you is it gives you a way. If the song has to keep going, how do you keep it going? So. One of the things that I love about lead sheets is you've playing the song. I am not an improviser, but I've got the chord symbols right in front of me so that if I need an interlude or you're working with a singer and she's like, well, I want to sing the first verse and then I want you to do something and then I'm going to come back in, right? And so they want to come back in and you're like, okay, but if you just sang... I don't know that I want to play it. You know, we do things, we go pray up an octave higher and we might play it there. But another thing you can do is you can just play around with the chord symbols. So she finished um, playing. Um, and now it's your turn to do something. What are you going to do? Chords. Sometimes you're playing songs, and especially if you're playing in church and a minister, you think you're finished. You played Pray to La Tab, you played Octafire, you played all these different things, and they look over you and they're like, still more, still more. But it's not still more, i.e., change the song either by memory or turn your page in a book and change the song. No, they're just maybe still pouring the wine or they're waiting for someone to come up. You just need the teensiest, tiniest bit. So by staying in the chord symbols of the song, you can literally just be playing, you know, this song right now just had the one and five and the four. So you can play around yourself getting used to playing with the chords and being able to go in, out. And I'm like, oh no, they're almost done. And you know, when they're done, you need to be done. Same for intros. Back in the day, choir directors used to always say, let's go back four measures, last four measures. And that would be the intro. So if I were looking at this song, my last four measures are... Well, 
that's long. I might say, mm, too much. What if I just go... And there's my intro. I just went back a little bit. I kind of did a little phrase. What if I'm working with a singer who just maybe doesn't sing as well as I'd like her to and has a lot of trouble placing the pitch? Then what I would do for my intro is I might just play the opening of the song. And just give her those notes, like really give her those notes so that she'll come in. And I can do that because I have the chords here, have the notes here to put someone in their key, you know, and just just keep um, letting them know that way. And then they're going to come in correctly. There's another chord I really love with chord symbols, and it's, I call it a cluster chord. I'm not really sure of the full name, but fourth finger on the chord symbol. And so for C chord, I put my four, three, two, right together, C, D, E, skip a note, G. There's my C cluster chord. You hear how beautiful that sounds? So that if I'm looking at lullaby, you might have played the whole song and now it's to the end. You're ending. It ends it so nice and so tingly. As you're waiting and you maybe have to enlarge a song, I'm now, I'm just at my chord symbols. So I'm at my C chord. Now I'm going to my G. I'm at my G. And then maybe I want to do my F. And then back to my C. Cluster chord just gives it a kind of, you know, just like a little tinkly, a little extra thing. You will find things that you make up. You will make up your own chord symbols. You will do so many different things that are just things that you come up with on your own to making things not so boring, to deciding how you want to play a piece, what you're going to do with that piece once you do it, and how you can make that piece your own improvise improvising and scale patterns and learning all these things i think it reminds me like of when you see people pull taffy and they're pulling it and they're pulling it and at some point you know you could eat a little bit of it but as they keep manipulating and pulling it they can just do more things with it you can get more and so you want to really really like enjoy that part of it so to me the best chord song ever when you're looking at chords and you want to start thinking about chord symbols is Good Old Canon and D by Johann Pachelbel. Canon and D is a song built on and of just four measures and just D, A, B, F, G, D, G, and then you're back again. So it's just seven chords, should be eight chords, probably is, and I'm just written it down wrong. We'll get into it, you'll, you'll work with me, right? So, but literally, you're, you have your three chords, you have your D, so, canon and D. Canon and D just means canon and D major. For D major, you need your F and C sharp. And with D major, and if you're not familiar with keys and you don't want to get a book and learn them, which you should, but just know, if I put start to a scale from D, and if I play it, it should sound like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. If I didn't have the right levers up, that might happen, and I'd be like, oh. This is what I need. So canon in D is in D major. Now, if you do not have levers, then you're going to play canon in C. And that's so fine. It's really quite acceptable. And the difference is, remember we talked about the D chord is one, the E chord is two. You know, each chord has a number. So you could look at canon in D and be like, okay, what are the chord numbers? But, you know, I was looking at it and I was like, okay, we go from a one chord to a five chord to a six, a three, a four. And, and once you got to the sixes and threes, I'm like, uh, is there an easier way? And with canon and D, there is. Canon and D, the chords, and most people are used to hearing it where you have one note and it starts with the D and it goes down to the A, to the B, to the F sharp, 
to the G, to the D, and it ends G to the A. And so there are your eight chords. I don't know why I wrote down seven. I was probably getting tired. I don't know. But there are your eight chords. The song is eight chords. So remember, you can take those third fingers now and play that whole run of the eight chords. Now, I challenge you to get yourself a mnemonic device to make up a saying for your D-A-B-F-G-D-G-A. I was trying to think of something really clever. Do all best friends gather, Denise Grupp around. I was trying to think of a real cute harp gathering one, but I've got to be honest with you. The only reason I know how to play canon in D is because I challenged my students to learn the piece. They were frustrating me. They weren't learning it. And I said, I'm giving you 10 minutes and I'll be back. And I stormed out the room in fantastic teacher style. And I came back and they were all playing it. Some of them looked like they were mumbling. Some of them were staring at their stands. But I knew there was no way they could all be playing it. And then I walked around and looked at what they were looking at. And they were looking at words that they had written down. So they're very politically incorrect. I'll blame it on my students. Don't be offended. If you're offended, make up your own. But I tell you, it stayed in my head like this. And it was, do all big fat guys or girls, the girls say guys, the guys say girls, drink gator aid. Two words. What? I can remember that sentence. Do all big fat guys drink Gatorade? Well, maybe not because they're big and fat. I don't know, but it's stuck. And all of a sudden, now remember, middle finger, skip a note, skip a note. So, and I'm going to be up an octave here. I'll be here. And we're going to just play chords. Watch. Do all big fat friendly guys drink Gator. A with one hand and you can put the chords anywhere. You could be here, do all big friendly guys drink Gator A. But that is literally the entire song of Canon in D. So I'd like you to write it out on your paper, maybe just write out those letters look at it and have it be something. And the reason I say, if you have the capability to raise up le levers and to be in the key of D, the reason I want you to do that is because if you're going to play with any other instrumentalist, they're going to be playing canon in D. So with this, any of you who thought you couldn't play it, you now can because you're just going to play chords. Do... different variations in the songs it's the same here you might not you're not going to play it all closed like that so all of a sudden now your DAD spreads it right playing the chords that way playing the chords four finger chords there's your your do your D your all your big Right? With your left hand, maybe just playing one thing. You can practice this, and I'm telling you, in about 10 minutes with these chords, you can play enough of canon and D that people would know it because it's such a familiar sound. And then you can start playing around. For your D chord, if your left hand is playing the chord, your right hand, just take the letter and just play three notes, D, E, F. So we're just going to do three note patterns, ready, starting at the D. D, A, B, to the F, F, to the G, down to the D, to the G, to the A. Maybe a chord in arpeggios here. This is when your inversions are going to come in handy. So 
than your alum root position, but look at the inversions we learned and you're playing. One thing good about inversions is it helps you from moving all around the heart from D to A to B. If I stay right here with D, my next chord is A, so maybe I'll use the inversion A, B to F to G to D to G and to A. And you see how I'm right there and I don't move my hands enough. So you really can, because of the beautiful thing of chords, play Pachelbel's Canon using the chord symbols and using different patterns, different things that you want to make up with it. My students always like to jazz it up and so they're playing D, D, A, B, F, G, D, G, A. They're doing things like that. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like you to play along with me in any form you want. You might be just practicing with your third finger the chords D, A, and getting used to it, and then adding D and F, A and C, and then adding the whole thing, maybe just your left hand, your right hand. Try, let's do a couple things, and then I will say only one more thing about the canon and D and chord symbols. If you're gonna learn any part of canon and D straight, it would be this part, right? These four measures. Because that's the part that people are looking to hear, right? And if you're gonna buy the piece, I love Linda Wood and um, Susan McDonald's fingerings for it. But just look at it. Figure it out. You could just download its public domain, Canon and D, and those eight measures is what will make people say, oh yeah, that's the song, right? Okay, so it has been just so great going through chord symbols with you, dealing with chord symbols. I want you to remember Finger Puzzles and Shapes by Denise Scrub Verbone, Lee Cheap Basics, Volume 1, 2, 3, Angie Bemis. Hymns and Harmony Lead Sheet Format or the Harpist Fake Book, Ray Poole. Easy Fake Book for Lever Harp. We're getting started in Pop Harp, Louise Trotter, because these are really good books for playing around with this lead sheet kind of thing. And right now, I want you to play with me. Canon and D, just with the chords and getting really comfortable and cozy with chord symbols. I better see you at Harp Gathering 2021. And thanks to Denise and Michael for this opportunity to present this workshop. Here we go, y'all. Canon and D. Ready and D chord. A, B chord, F, G chord, D chord, G chord, A chord. Now you say it. D. symbols, canon and D, best chord song ever, but have some fun with it and enjoy leading the way.
with your lead sheets. Mm -hmm.